Now, you might not like this video, but if you're struggling to gain muscle, this is more than likely the reason why. I think often people blame factors that are not the real reason why they're not gaining muscle. They might blame their diet or their protein intake or their sleep or their stress or their genetics. Factors that are absolutely important and might be killing your gains. However, the main reason that you're not gaining those gains are because you never actually stimulated them in the first place. Looking around at how most people train, they're not actually triggering those chemical cascades that cause muscle growth. You're focusing on recovery, you're focusing on diet, you're focusing on hormones, when you never actually triggered the thing that you have to recover from. It's like trying to plan your budget when you're not making any money. Who gives a shit? And I'll say it, I think diet is actually overrated when it comes to muscle growth. <laughs> it's vital for fat loss, and it will kill your progress if you chronically undereat. but most people are not limited by the lack of calories or protein. It is almost always the demand side of things, not the supply side of things. It's not, it's not that you're under supplying calories, it's that you never actually stimulated the muscle to grow in the first place. You're giving it all this energy and it's like, why are you giving it? We don't need this, nothing happened. Like, yeah, you did your squats, but it was eight reps in reserve. Well, why are you giving us this stuff? You have to have a stimulus to adapt to. If you're doing a bunch of singles on squats, or if your technique sucks and the tension is going everywhere but the area you want to target, uh, or it's insufficient volume, or your program just sucks, or there's no progressive overload, what exactly are you trying to recover from? You're not actually stimulating those gains in the first place. Just to balance this video out a little bit, walking around post-workout, I'm not saying you have to kill yourself every single set or, or any set. Don't, don't, don't do that. But I see a lot of people just going through the motions. They're really just there physically, but not mentally. And you know, you can keep reps in reserve as long as the effort is there. I would rather have you have the effort there and not go to failure compared to going to failure, but it's not really an honest effort. Those two things are not entirely synonymous. I've seen plenty of people fail squats or fail lateral raises or something else where it was technical or it was volitional, even worse. And the biggest difference between beginners and more advanced bodybuilders, it's not necessarily their physical size. If you remove that and you just watch them train, you could tell who was who. If you put their brains in two bodies that were twins, you could tell who was the advanced athlete based on their focus, their attention to detail, their execution, how they are moving, how they are actually controlling the weight. Whereas a beginner, you know, they give three bad reps and then they have their partner assist them and, and the tension is going basically everywhere but what is actually going to be useful. And a muscle is just a piece of meat, dude, okay? It's just a piece of steak strapped to your body that responds to various stimuli. And if you're not providing those stimuli or occasionally, rarely, if you're providing way too much of that stimuli, you're just not gonna grow. Also, if everything else is on point, your volume probably doesn't need to be as high as you think it needs to be. It's something called the volume trap. I've fallen into it. A lot of people fall into it where they think more is better. At this point, I'm constantly trying to find ways to reduce my volume, to get more from less. And so we know based on research, a few things. First, that you have to be fairly close to failure to grow reliably. Next, that most people are nowhere near failure if they're just training casually. They often have six, eight, 10 reps or more in the tank than they actually think. Observationally, most people are not training very hard. They're not using very much intention or good technique or effort. They're not diving into the pain. They are hitting volitional failure or they're using rest pause, but they're still way far away from failure and attack the muscle. I guess if you could sum up this video, it is attack the muscle. Fly as close to that flame as you can. And proximity to failure is definitely not enough. I almost always train pretty damn close to failure, but your execution, your intention, the tempo, the mind-muscle connection, the squeeze, the stretch, contraction, 
all of these things can add up to where you can get more from less. Proper hypertrophy training, it's tough. It's not easy. I mean, if you think it's going to be easy, find another goal, okay? Because you're just not cut out for this. If you actually want to get results, you have to accept way, way early in your training career that it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. It's going to hurt. You might have a, even have pain. You know, you might wake up and you don't feel 100%. You feel tired. You feel fatigued. That's just part of the process. And there are certainly some muscle groups that I think some people have never effectively trained in their lives. Maybe they've trained for a few years, they've been on this very basic cookie cutter program, but they're not moving in such a way to actually place resistance on the areas that they're trying to target, and therefore they're just, they're just not growing, right? If you're using your rear delts to move a weight instead of your lats, why would, the, why would your lats grow? They're not gonna grow because there's no tension, you're not actually using the muscle, and so it's not gonna grow. And your rear delts are gonna grow even more until they're doing pretty much all the work. And this goes with a lot of different areas. There are many ways to use only your strong points and ignore what is not very strong. See a lot of people searching for the easy way out. If it was easy, anyone could do it. If it was easy, everyone would be jacked. A few examples, rear delts can take over from lats, the front delts can take over from the chest. If you're bench pressing like up here, you're not gonna get much from that in terms of chest development. This is where a slight arch, keeping everything low and, and depressed, etc., is gonna be very, very useful. Quads, I see a lot of people squatting, they're not getting much for their quads from that. It's just all, it's all lower back and ass. And hypertrophy is one of those things where it is quite flexible. You can have a wide variety of volumes, intensity, frequency, rep ranges, exercise selection, tempos, techniques. There's a lot of flexibility here and you're gonna to have to experiment and see what works for you. But guess what? It's always gonna be difficult. It's never gonna be easy and if you're looking for the easy way out, it's not gonna work. So get your quality of set in order before you try to scale volume. You might not even have to do super high volume at all or even high volume. A lot of people get by on pretty modest amounts of volume even at a very high level. And this is because the sets they do, do, <laughs> do do, are actually really, really good. Very stimulatory, very fatiguing as well, but they get a lot out of the volume that they are putting in. So hopefully this video was a little bit of a wake up call. It has to be tough, okay? It has to be difficult if it's not extremely challenging, if you're not going into at least some sets kind of apprehensive, if not in complete terror you're probably not training sufficiently hard enough. No one wants to tell you this. You can't sell this. You can't put this in a pill, but this is probably exactly what you need to hear. I'm always astonished by the number of people whose training is not working for them, and yet they don't change it. I guess it's that thing where, you know, trust the process, but if the process is really not working very well, trusting it is not a good idea. If it's not working, you should change it. You should modify it. You should adapt it. You should add in new movements. You could try different techniques, different tempos, maybe higher volume, maybe lower volume. So just going through the motions and being in the gym is not enough. And no supplement in the world, no training program in the world is going to solve that. That's a you issue. That's an experimentation issue. And it's something that even a coach is not going to be able to solve if you are not mentally invested. And a lot of people are worried about a lot of things that they just don't need to worry about because they don't have this one major factor in place. Now, it's also possible you're training too hard, but that is just such a tiny minority of people. If that's you, you probably know it. If it's not you, you're probably on this side of things. All right, that is all for this video. If you want more tasty training morsels, you can grab a copy of my book. Link in a pinned comment down below. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.